Welcome to Coach Talk with the Coaches. My name is Casey and I am the Vino and Vision Lead U.S. Coach located in Iowa. I'm here with Zulma and Sala today and we're going to discuss happiness. And uh, with that, I'll go ahead and let Zulma and Sala give you a quick introduction. Hello, good morning, friends. It's so good to have you here with us and I'm very to have you come along and share the space with us for the next 30 or so minutes so that we can talk what happiness is all about. So uh, being able to express my joy to share space like our being and vision coaches and with you as well is a uh, personal way in which I gather my happiness. So thank you for being here and um, I like <laughs> hello, hello, everybody. This is Sala here saying good afternoon from the Gambia, all the way from the Gambia. Um, yeah, I'm the regional coach for Europe and Asia, and I'm happy to be on this platform today with Zulma and Casey to discuss on our topics about happiness today. And I hope to connect with you guys, and I hope you um, relate with us. So, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So um, let's go ahead and talk about happiness. So Zulma, do you want to maybe just ask us a question or do you have a topic and then uh, Sala and I can give you our thoughts? Yes, absolutely. I have uh, a few things in mind um, that we can talk about when it comes to, to happiness. On a personal note, I see happiness like beauty and they say that beauty is in the eye of the beholder so not dismissing anything that could hinder that such as you know, medical issues that someone may have that may need to have attention for uh, when we talk about happiness and being able to be happy uh, there are tools and things we can do to help ourselves find that happiness if we've not reached it yet. So with the mindset of it being like beauty and beauty is in the eye of the beholder, many times there are things that block us from seeing the potential for happiness in different aspects of our life. So that's what we're going to be talking about today, right? The possibilities and potential for reaching happiness when blocks or challenges are in the way of us being able to see that. So with that in mind, let's talk about what are some enemies of happiness? Anything within your experience or something that you've seen someone else experience, potentially a client, a family member, a friend, um, and then I will share mine. Okay, um, I think I'll just jump in and go ahead um, because something that you said aligns with what I've been talking about on my Tuesday night um, coaching with Casey. And I've been talking about perception. And so what you said about beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It all has to do with our perception of reality. And when we think about perception, that's how when we look at the world and take in the information through our senses, how does our brain interpret that? And depending on our experiences in life and all kinds of different factors that can be different depending on like depending on the person so I can see something and you can see the same thing as me but we have totally two completely different opinions on that so um so going so how perception I think relates back to the an enemy is that if you aren't if you aren't aware that perception is even happening and that you're just a lot of people just kind of float through life and with their perceptions just happening and they aren't aware that what's happening in their brain, how they're perceiving the world are being influenced by different things. And that can be things from early on in childhood all through your life. And so, for example, maybe um, you were influenced through your life that 
happiness comes from money, for example. So then you might have that perception stuck and you might not even think about why do I think that money will bring me happiness? Because you aren't even thinking about that there's another way. And so people get stuck in a perception. I guess I, you could call it like a perception loop in thinking that there's only one thing that will bring me happiness. And that thing might not even be something that would even remotely come close to what's really going to bring them happiness. But until they realize and can take a look at that, then um, they're going to be stuck. And so I think being aware of our own perceptions and asking ourselves questions like, why do I believe this will make me happy? What is it that's, you know, how do I really feel about this? And really taking a deep look inside. I think that it, until people do that, they might um, find themselves being stuck. Wow, that's amazing. Perception, it's something that it's so belonging of each one of us, right? No one can tell you what to believe unless you choose to believe what you're told to believe. Even in that scenario, you still have a choice because perception belongs to you and how you're going to have a vision of whatever it may be you're presenting with you decide at what level you're influenced or not, right? And so seeing perception, embodying the idea of perception as something that could become an enemy um, because of lacking the self-awareness aspect of it, well, that's, that's mind-blowing because those are the moments where I feel we can make a connection between um, too much of a good thing isn't necessarily a good thing right? It doesn't become extra good because it's good. Something is good because you can make good use of it. So even um, being gifted with the ability to have perception to make our own decisions uh, when we are, when our perception is skewed, it can become an enemy. Absolutely. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Sala, what do you have to have to say just, about enemies. I love the fact um, you guys are onto the perception. The perception is like, it's interesting how people will perceive things and perceive happiness. So um, to me, adding that perception, I will add meaning to it as well, because everybody wants to give a meaning to something, what it means to them, because, um, Happiness will mean different things to different people. But um, if you bring in the perception, you have to give it a meaning and the connection and the feeling. Why is this connected to you? So going back to the enemies, like Zulma says, so it's more like all the disadvantages, things that will just not sit well for you. Because at the end of the day, if you are trying to do things outside of your control, things that you cannot control, that's where the enemies lie because it's out of your control. So you will feel frustrated that you cannot deal with something. Obviously, it will deprive you of the happiness that we're talking about because you are now in a different state of being. Because you cannot get to where you want to be and the influence as well. I will take example social media for one. That's now the influence because um, coming back to your perception, people think that the perception that they see on social media that classify as happiness. That's one for example. So it does help me a lot in my own personal experiences. As far as social media is concerned, I just scroll and browse, but I will not make any judgment or meaning or perception to things to um, define the kind of person I am. It has to be true to me. So um, the, one of the big enemies could be um, trying to be somebody that you are not. It will be a long, long, long way and it will be very difficult emotionally. Obviously, um, it will be no one enemy. And whatever is not within your reach and you cannot deal with it, I mean, that will jeopardize your happiness too. So um, what is our state of connection now? 
because sometimes people cannot even relate. They do not know if what they are dealing with, how is it making them feel? So now it's the feeling now. Do I feel good about this? What does happiness feel to you? What does happiness look like to you? Just like our regular clients when they come, because we cannot, we're not advisors. We cannot tell them this is what you have to do to be happy. This is what you have to do to be happy. We have to sort of converse with them. And most of the time we mainly use the relation, the model that we do, the relational models, because we um, talked about the self-care. We talked about the love. We talked about now the happiness. It's all within the same relational. So forging that relationship um, with ourselves, feeling good about it. And if you're not feeling good about it, I bet if we're saying, no, I am not happy. So yeah, I'll just jump on to start on what it means to everybody is different. So I'm very, um, very curious to learn more from you guys to see how you deal with um, some of the situations, especially with yourself and the clients that we deal with because it's always different from everybody. And there's a lot of things that would classify as the enemies, one of them being um, trying to be what you're not, trying to um, just connect wrongly and all that. But um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say for now. Let's see what we have in store from Zuma. I'll share mine. And they're really an extension of yours. Uh, because I feel as human beings, we share a lot. Whereas <laughs> we say in the monastery, we don't share, we take turns, right? So at different times, we will take yeah. in a face. Our patterns are very different. And that's why we can have conversations as well. There's something that I'm going to say that may resonate with Casey or may resonate with you, uh, Sala each other. So I'm going to take um, your lead, Sala, and more on one of the enemies to my happiness that um, I think for a while was something that I had to um, come to terms with because it's not only in so there's acceptance of, you know, what kind of enemy we're facing and dealing, then we'll know what to do or what we want to do about it. So for me, that was comparison, you know, comparing ourselves um, to others is something that is just as natural, probably as being alive, right? It, ever since we're, we're little, it's something that may just start appearing. You know, I do hear my elementary age child come home and tell me things where he's already comparing himself, his worth to his classmates. So it's something that just is going to happen. And as a parent, you know, how do I help with that if I myself am dealing with that? So accepting that that was or can be in, in a challenge is very important. So when I finally, uh, was able to accept that, then I formed a plan of action for myself. So very much like you said, Sala, what am I going to do when a feeling arises as I'm scrolling through social media? You know, what if in my life I'm trying to do something that it's working out, but not fast enough, and I see someone already there that destination that I'd like to be in right so being okay with embodying that emotion of I'm feeling this way because that's something I want to have therefore I'm comparing myself my value and even my self-esteem and growth um, recognizing that that's their chapter 500 and this is my chapter 50 there is no reason to compare my growth, especially with my understanding of a holistic lifestyle, that organic growth that I wanted to be sustainable so that it can carry me over time and so I can enjoy the journey. 
right? Because what does happiness become? Is happiness one big destination or is it small trips with attainable happiness that then adds up to this big, huge destination that we can call our own self-happiness or this, or the happiness that we create for, for the self and all of those spaces we are a part of. So um, that's one of them. And the second one is overanalyzing, right? Entering into a loop of, of overanalyzing things um, instead of taking action. Many times we deem happiness unattainable because we're in this loophole of overthinking something that might be quite simple. And that once we process it, the result would be that this isn't something that contributes to my happiness, therefore I can let it go. Or you do discover that indeed, this is something that does have a contribution to your happiness. Because at the end of the day, happiness is going to be a byproduct of all of those things that we put together. So those are the two for me. And I have found through experience that when we embody what we feel, especially in times where uh, we are hard on ourselves for not being happy, it is the time that we can consider on taking that self-responsibility because at the end of the day, just like beauty is in the eye of the beholder, the responsibility towards our own happiness is in our hands. And taking into consideration how perspective, how um, analyzing and how um, understanding what comparison is all about because not all comparison is necessarily negative. Right, so oftentimes we talk about, about it not being a, this is how this is, and this is how, like a concrete perspective, right? Having the fluidity to understand that it's a range and that we can have that regulation of emotions, whatever they may be, that can lead us to our ultimate destination happiness. Lord, ladies. I think Sala will be joining us back in a minute. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So while she's joining in again, um, I'll go ahead and talk about a couple of things that um, for myself that have, that I've struggled with. And um, I think they, the things that I'm going to talk about kind of go hand in hand, but um, caring about what other people think about me and um, looking outside of myself for acceptance. So. I think those things kind of go hand in hand, but they can have their own individual scenarios. But, um, you know, through throughout my life, and I think it's just a human thing to want to be accepted. Um, but so many times we look for that validation from outside of ourselves um, to be accepted. And what really needs to happen is going inside and accepting yourself. Because when, until you accept yourself, then other people can't accept you because you don't even know who you are. Um, and then as far as what other people think about you, uh, there is a saying or a quote by somebody that says that other people's opinions of you are none of your business. And, um, and I really like that. Like when I heard that, it was kind of like a light bulb went off and it's like, oh yeah, you know what? That, that really, that's really helpful actually. Um, because somebody's opinion of me, why should that matter? If I'm doing everything, if I know who I am and if I'm um, living my life, then it really doesn't matter. And so once, you know, it's a total mindset shift to go from looking outside of myself for acceptance to accepting myself. So then it's more like, instead of an outside in, it's an inside out perspective on life. And so once that happens, a mindset shift happens and then it really, you know, I'm not saying that there's no struggles because there will still be struggles with this. It's, we're all human beings. We all have feelings and we can get, you know, there can be all kinds of conflicts that can arise from different things, but, um, but it does become easier, I would say, it, once you accept yourself and get to know yourself better and then 
you know, it's, and it's also a process. It's not something that happens overnight. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome, crazy, I like that. <laughs> I mean, I think both of you has just hit the nail on the head. I've been here thinking about, I think we're kind of speaking the same language per se. The fact that I can sort of sense, and I think one of you did mention about the acceptance. Going back to the enemies of happiness, a lot of the time um, we're not accepting ourselves because we're always fighting with ourselves saying, why is that? Why are things not going well? Because we, if we're always in the negative, not going with the flow, so then that would be a disadvantage because it's the acceptance. We cannot accept the kind of person we are. And then we become so sensitive, our egos kick in. And then we always want to change others, right? We're inclined to change others because at the end of the day, it's more like, no, you have to think like me for me to like you. For that, for me, there's so much um, conditions attached to our happiness, what we perceive as it. Most of the time you ask clients, it's like, why do you think this is not working? Why is that? So it's always about them. Oh, he or she is not doing this, he or she, but how many times do we take um, responsibility to look to say, okay, even though I would not like to change others, but what can I change within myself for me to make this relationship work or to love myself or love other people? So I think it's the self-acceptance always is in my head saying, okay, all right. So you're fighting with nature, number one, why things are not working, the unknown, you can't pin it. <laughs> and then you get more frustrated with people around you, um, not being in line with your values, right? Because everybody has some set of perceptions, some beliefs, some values, some meaning to things that will make them happy. And if anyone else step in that toes, they're like, no, I'm not happy. So my ego, you bruise my ego. That kind of a, like, but then we are not accepting others to say, okay, you bruise my ego, but I still love you because I am not you, you are not me. So having to get to that level of acceptance and forgiveness is always another enemy to happiness. We are working against it. So that's just something that I want to bring in to, um, to add on to the enemies, because I think this topic, we can talk about this topic all the time without going anywhere. There's a lot of things um, because we don't have clients that come and say, Zulma, can you coach me today? I am very happy. My home is happy. It's always the negative. It's always a problem. It's always I am not happy. It's always what you ask them the why. What is the why is the why? Sometimes they cannot tell you. Sometimes they tell you. And most times it's not about them. They don't take responsibility. They will always say, no, it's the other person. It's the other person. So have you Hello. It's very far away. We've lost you there for a second. <laughs> and um, but I'll take over from there for, uh, for Salah because I that's actually something that I wanted to to bring up as well. And only when we are aware of our short back, I think it's just really select. Yeah, um, can you send her a message? See if she if she gets that. So only when we become aware. Or do we decide what we to do? But you are the one, so why can't you get your own sort of feeling? Okay, so that's just why I want to chip in. But yeah, I think um, the insecurity. Yeah, thank you, Sala. So can you see? We have an issue. Let's wrap this up. <laughs> can you hear us now? Yeah, Sarah? can you hear me, Zulma? We can. Is it better we, now? 
Yes, it's way I can better. hear you. You were in slow motion. It's really bad. Is it better now? I know. Very terrible. I have to move a location. Yeah, it was. It's very far away. You know, we we had to have some good. Good. Uh, I jumped in. And acceptance is very important because only when we have that awareness for our shortcomings we know what to do about it so if we are um blocking our own happiness because we don't feel heard then are we doing enough listening right if we're not happy because we love are we loving right and are we love? are we giving what we're wanting to receive so those are those were all amazing points, Sala, that that you made, and very insightful, because all of that can at the end of the day do. I will X, Y, and Z, right? When I get that, uh, when my children are grown, when this, when that, and then you get to that point and you realize you wasted time that you will never get back. So on that note, where does coaching come into the topic of happy coaching do for any of us and for me what coaching brought to the table and being able to uh, leverage my enemies to happiness was uh, that for me it comes to gratefulness right if I am grateful for what I have I no longer have to balance myself and compare myself to anyone out there because I am grateful for what I have, for what I'm able to give and for what I'm able to receive. And I'm what my own kind of special, right? What I have special, therefore no need for comparison. Um, overanalyzing. overanalyzing something, it's fear of making decisions. So with coaching, really getting down to that one or two words that will help me focus into what I need to accomplish, help me make better decisions, contribute to my daily, monthly, year, and purpose and existence. So our coaching module for innovation has the first question is what, right? Client might determine at the point that their perception of happiness is it's skewed and that they may need a, a shift in that department. Simple questions like that. Being able to ask, am I happy? Because again, you cannot change what you are not even aware of that is contributing in a negative way your life and your happiness so these are just examples of what you know our coaching modules can do and then being able to identify what makes us happy and what is my purpose in life why am I here and just a summary of these things that come together to create what is my plan here on after going to be to be happy uh, I think one of you mentioned it but um a few years ago, I ran a beta program uh, for women, and uh, we won't have time to go into detail about what it was, but at the end of this beta program, and I asked a series of questions to see if they would be selected to participate in it, I um, would say that 98% of those that responded, it, I had about 200 people respond, was the statement, I just want to be happy. And that was very uh, impactful for me because that's exactly, you know, what I want. It's what we all want. And I think that's a great way <laughs> to wrap up today. We um, have a couple of minutes left. Is there anything that you guys want to add? Um, I would just, I guess, end In with this case, quote. Can go first and wrap okay. up? Okay. So um, I'll just end yeah. with this quote that popped up yesterday and I thought it was perfect. And it is that happy people build their inner world, unhappy people blame their outer world. And so I think that's a good 
quote for me to end on personally. Okay, that's beautiful. You guys are amazing. I mean, we could stay here all day chatting about happiness. But um, going back to what you just said, um, Zulma, in our coaching practice, what it does, I mean, very rare, very that stress out so much. I know we're human as well, but because I think using the tools that we have, that we share with others, I mean, it's a daily reflection of the kind of things that we do. Even if we want to go back to the enemies of happiness, we are aware, straight away we can do the shifting. Unless you want to stay in that um, motion, but at least once you have those tools, as long as you know, okay, the foot that you're getting on, it's really not going to make you happy. So we can go back to the tools that we have to even help ourselves and our client to reflect on things, to see what, what matters, what is your why. Going back to that question, is it the, the end goal or is it the journey or is it what you feel right now? Oh, is it, does it, why would um, the external determine my happiness? Somebody has to be happy for me to be happy. Someone has to be sad for me to be happy. That is emotionally draining. So how do you, we keep ourselves sane and consistent to the kind of happiness that we want to live? It doesn't matter what the external um, situation is. So I think it requires some level of practice on a daily. To me, I will say the journey is even more beautiful. We know the end goal, we know the why, but how long is it gonna take you to get there unless you don't do the process? Enjoy the journey and be aware. The most beautiful thing is, especially doing the code, be more aware of my state of being. If I get to that state, I will assess myself. Why am I feeling this way? Why is this person irritated me? Why is this happening? Then I can center myself back and use the tools to say, okay, inhale, I think you are just thinking, overthinking and all that. But the tools is there for us to use and to um, really guide us so that, um, yeah, we will have our own sanity and keep going the journey is what matters and the right now, because I have to assess myself right now. I don't know what happened yesterday. I don't want to know what's happening tomorrow. It's right now that's matter. What do I do right now to make sure I am happy right now? And nobody is going to snipe that from me. Very good. So I think we can end with happiness is an inside job. And if you're ready to take on that job or expand on it, feel free to check out our website, uh, and a list of our coaches who would be more than happy to hold hands with you on your destiny. Until next time, we'll see you guys. Have a great week and the weekend. And um, we'll see you in a month with a new theme. Destination happiness. <laughs> <laughs>